Just kidding. <laughs> All right, everyone. It's time for something that we've been waiting on. So let's go on into the fish room here. So first of all, if you haven't watched this video right here, then go check out that video first. And if you are one of the 15 people that are watching it on a TV, then click the link down below and then come back and watch this video. So it is time to clean the FX4. The last time it had been a long time. It had been well over a year since I had cleaned it out. It was really dirty. I haven't touched this thing in six months, so I have no idea what it, what it looks like, but I'm hoping that it's gonna be better than last time. It's probably gonna still be pretty dirty, but I can tell by the flow from the outflow of the, uh, of the filter that it's not as bad as last time. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. And fortunately, we've got uh, Matt here, my editor, who's also the camera guy today. And uh, it'll be a lot easier for me because I won't have to stop and start and do all that kind of stuff with the camera. But we'll go ahead and just do it like I would normally do it on my own. So first thing I gotta do is cut the power to the filter. So I have this little hidden thing back here. And this is the, that's the canister filter there. So we'll just unplug that. And then I've got this uh, nice little hidden panel right here where I can just take this off. And the filter lives back here. So it's off and uh, now I can just easily pull it out. So I'm gonna pull it out a little bit so I can get to it. And then because I do this so infrequently, I kind of have to remember the sequence of like turning off the water valve. So there's a intake and an outflow. So we gotta make sure those are both closed. And then, oh yes, important. Always have a towel with you because it could be a little messy and in fact, this one will probably be, we'll, we'll get some water on me and on the floor and stuff like that. So we'll have a towel here. Not that I'm super worried about the floor because it's a concrete floor in the basement, but all right, open it up. Oh my God. Two hours later. <laughs> this is. This looks fun. Oh, so fun. There Practically a commercial for the yeah. FX4. Right. There we go. So. And why do you need an FX4 for this? Well, I don't need one. Um, and I got it for free. So, you know, that kind of always helps. But because I do have like air driven filters in here. I have a Zis bio. It's actually not connected right now, maybe. But um, anyway, I have a Zis uh, filter in there that I need to make sure it's flowing properly. But canister filter, because this is an overstocked aquarium and I've got a lot of fish in there, a lot of waste, it does help. So we'll go ahead and pull it out here. I think I'm also gonna have to unplug the cord. See, or not unplug it, but fish it through. This is good stuff. Good stuff. See, this is a must-see TV. All right, now we got this guy here. We'll take it over to our sink. I always recommend to do this like in a fish room sink or a garage or something like that where you can get a little bit messy with it and not do it somewhere where people are gonna get angry about all the water that you're spilling or outside on a deck or a patio or something like that, backyard. All right, so time to crack it, crack it open and see what's going on in here. So we'll undo all these. So I'm guessing that we're gonna find like snails in here, a lot of fish muck. But if you watched that last one, you saw how terrible it looked. I'm hoping that this is gonna be better and thank you all for reminding me that it was time to redo it because I did promise that we would do it again after six months and not wait 16 months. Here we go. Eh, it's about average, I guess. It's not great. I mean, it's, that's gross, but it doesn't smell bad because it's healthy. It's just full of gunk. 
but uh, not nearly as bad as last time. So let me go ahead and set this aside here. Some people would say that you only should clean your filter with tank water because you could kill beneficial bacteria by using tap water that's full of chlorine or chloramine. However, there's so much beneficial bacteria in other filters, in the substrate, on the sides of the acrylic. Um, and even the, sub, even the beneficial bacteria in here that I'm gonna clean with tap water, it's not all gonna die. In fact, there was uh, some studies done. In fact, um, my friend uh, Jason from Primetime Aquatics, he's actually a, like a biology professor at a college. And he did this whole video talking about beneficial bacteria and how much it takes to kill it with chlorine. So we're not gonna worry about that this time, but here we can kind of see, and this is six months, right? That's, that's there we go, that's the thumbnail. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and just take this apart. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain out the water, just pour it out. And then I'm gonna set this down here so I can, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, I'm just gonna lift this basket out just like this. So grab them all. Am I in your way? No, you're good. We'll lift them all out like that. So there we can see that's all there's a lot of gunk in there. There's actually a lot more than I anticipated for six months, but a lot less than last time for sure. So let me go ahead and um, set this aside. This is where doing this outside, like on a lawn might be helpful because then I'd be watering the, the, yeah, the grass. Beneficial for the grass. Beneficial for the grass. I'm just gonna dump this water, dump that out. You know, I'd give you a hand, but- uh... Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see, I'm just gonna set this down and now we'll get to cleaning the baskets. So it's kind of messy. I, I keep saying I need an apron for this kind of job. Um, an aquarium co-op apron? That would be cool, yeah, that would be cool. So again, I'm just gonna use tap water this time and uh, to all of you out there that tell me that I'm doing it wrong, go watch Primetime Aquatics video and learn about beneficial bacteria from a scientist or a biology professor. And uh, don't take my word for it, take his word for it. So, all right, so again, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty quick. Like it's, it looked bad, but it wasn't like saturated like, like last time. So we'll just keep on rinsing all these here. So if you didn't have the FX4 for that tank, what would you do instead? I would probably just have multiple sponge filters in there, and which is what I've done in the past. In fact, like my, my uh, Malawi and Buna tanks that are 75 gallons, I've got a couple of those. Those have sponge filters. And then once every couple or months or so, depending on how clogged they are, I'll take them out, clean them, and then um, put them back in. It's, it, and it takes like five minutes. So it's a very easy process. It's a lot cheaper to run sponge filters and you don't get all messy like this. So yeah, there's some nice gunk. You can see all the, the gunk in there that's in these uh, ceramic rings. So yeah, let's just rinse it all off. So sometimes when I'm cleaning filters, I'll try to capture the water and like water house plants and stuff like that. Um, but we don't have time for that today. We got stuff to do, things to film. We're gonna go buy some fish later, hopefully, so. So let's see, so this video comes out in October, October, November, December. Oh, That's... actually, yeah, this video will come out. Oh, no, this... this video comes out the day after tomorrow. Okay, so <laughs> this video comes out at the end of September. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we got, so by the end of March, early April, like April Fool's Day, how about that? April Fool's Day will be time to uh, to film to uh, clean this again. So I need I need the internet's help. Reminders from the people out there that let me know in March, early April that it's time to clean this thing again, so we don't have a, a repeat of six months ago when it was just terrible. So in the last video, people were talking about the smell, and they were saying, "Oh my God." I bet that smells terrible. A healthy filter doesn't really have a bad odor. You'll have some odor, but it's not going to smell horrible because 
basically you have beneficial bacteria that's alive and it's breaking down all the waste. So it doesn't smell like rotting, decomposing fish poop. It just kind of smells like dirt. It smells earthy. Like I'm not going to ask Matt to come stick his nose in this, but he's very close by. and he's, he's not gagging or anything. It does not stink. Mm. So there's no like bad odor to this. So I just want to put that out there for people that are wondering. If there's any bad smell in here, it's probably from the sump that's underneath the sink because the stuff kind of collects in there and I got to clean that thing out once in a while too. Well, I can definitely attest to the fact that I walked in here and other than the, uh, you know, slight raise in temperature, th there's no smell. There's, there's mm -hmm. really nothing detectable that there's right. a lot of animals in here. Yep. <clears throat> so I really try to not only make this place, you know, a good environment for the fish and all the animals in here, obviously, the snails and the shrimp and the fish and everything. But I also want it to be enjoyable, enjoyable for people so that I can hang out here and other people can come in here and, and kind of check it out and enjoy it and be comfortable. So, you know, it's right now it's 78 degrees in here. Um, and it usually stays anywhere from about 78 to about 81 degrees in here, depending on what's going on outside and everything. So. It's warm, but it's not humid because we have the dehumidifier running all the time. And it just uh, makes it kind of a nice tropical environment without humidity. And you can be down here in a t-shirt and shorts, even in the middle of winter, and just enjoy um, enjoy the fish room. So it's kind of a, a great place to be. I made a video recently kind of talking about being bored and, you know, but again, it was summertime and I was doing stuff and outside and, New motorcycles. New motorcycles. So now that we're, you know, we're getting closer to fall. I am in California, so it's not, we don't have like, you know, bad weather, but days will start to get sh shorter. It'll be cooler. It'll rain and I'll spend more time in here again. And uh, ever since that video, I have been kind of making a conscious effort to kind of be more, um, just kind of hang out here more and, and kind of, I think honestly, I kind of got a little bit reinvigorated after making that video to kind of thinking about what I do enjoy about being down here. And um, there are still things that I want to change. And I, and I know I talked about like maybe changing out some tanks and I'm still thinking about it, but I don't want to do it just to do it. I want to do it if it makes sense for the fish room, if it makes sense for me from a workflow perspective, from an enjoyment perspective. And I don't want to just do things just to do them. Um, and that's easy to do, especially when you have so many aquariums and you're on YouTube all the time and people want to see new things and they get bored of the same old stuff. But I kind of want to just do stuff for me to enjoy. And uh, so that's kind of the direction of this fish room. But I do have a new tank upstairs that uh, maybe we'll... Matt hasn't been upstairs in the house yet, but maybe we'll go up there and get a couple shots. I've got a new aquarium that I just set up that's going to be just for work and uh some other stuff but i thought you said i had to stay in the garage yes that's right you're banned to the garage it's because of my ferocious guard dog that matt has to stay down here otherwise he'll be licked to death he's forced to pet my dog so. captain is amazing he's a fun dog yeah all right so not so bad not nearly as bad as last time we've been doing this for maybe 10 minutes or so but everything's clean. Now I just have to kind of reassemble it. So again, getting back to the beneficial bacteria. Yes, we did use water. We do have chloramine in this water. So some might have got killed off, some got washed away, but some is probably still alive. And again, there's a ton in the aquarium and beneficial bacteria replicates very quickly. So um, if you do have, uh, any that are lost, they will reap. I think it takes like, I want to say like 16 hours or something or 18, something like that where beneficial bacteria can, um, can uh, replicate and like double itself every 16 hours. So let's say that you had like a thousand, you'll have 2000 after 16 hours under optimal conditions and 4,000, you know, 32 hours later kind of a thing. So not a big deal. So. 
So just like that, we're done. So now I just have to kind of put it all back together. So now I'm going to uh, refill it because you can't have it full of air. You've got to have water in the uh, filter so that it's easier to prime. And I'm going to throw a little bit of a dechlorinator in there, even though we just talked about the whole chloramine thing. I don't want to soak it in chloramine water. So a couple little squirts of uh, Fritz Complete with the Aquarium Co-op pump head. Got to pay the bills. And I will fill it up with some water. So I might have talked about this in past videos. I think I'm sure I have about like making things easier. Having a hose for anything in the aquarium is so much better because I can, you know, refill all my aquariums um, from my sink with the hose. It just, then I can temperature match it so it's not cold water. It's perfectly, you know, the right temperature. So one trick, so you'll notice on the FX4 and other filters like this, that there's multiple points to uh, attach the, the lid. And what you don't want to do is go in succession. When you're tightening the lug nuts on a car, you don't go in a, in a circle, you go across. And so that way you have even pressure all over. So I do the same thing when I'm tightening these down. So if you look at the tank right now, it's pretty clear looking. Yeah. When, we, when we turn it on, it's going to look messy because the overflow, not the overflow, but the um, intake, the outtake tubes, there's some stuff that's in there. And sure. so that's going to get all blown out. So it'll look bad for a couple of hours and then it'll clear out and get trapped in the filter and we'll be good again. All right, so attached, tight. And then I'm going to open up the, uh, open the valves back up, make sure that nothing spills out. I hear the water. And we'll plug her in. I have kind of a modified outflow. Um, I talked about that product before. There's a, a local guy that, not a local guy, but a guy in the US that makes these little aerators that can attach to um, hang on the backs and canister filters and stuff like that, sumps, and it helps to kind of get some extra aeration. So, so there's that, we're done. Very cool. That was pretty easy. Everything's running. Happy fish. Uh, yeah, so the way that these work is it'll, you first turn them on, they turn on, then they turn off in a couple of minutes, and then it kind of cycles back on again, but. All right, little wipe down. And uh, yeah, that was good. So there we go. It's been six months. Hopefully you watched that other video and you can see how crazy it was last time. This time, much, much better. It didn't take that long, maybe all of 10 minutes or so, or 15 minutes. Last time it was a lot longer, it was a lot dirtier, it took twice as long to clean it, plus I was filming and all that stuff. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Probably more entertaining than educational, except for those couple little tidbits I gave. But if you have not seen that other video, then click on it right here, check that out. And uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Catch you on the next one. More grunt, okay, okay. more exertion. I gotta hear it, I gotta hear it, my friend. <laughs> all right. All right? Yep. All right, ready? And let me go in and action. <laughs>